have you you haven't seen any of the Sony Venom you know, expanded movie films? You haven't seen the Sony's Venom verse, have you? No, I've only seen little clips where um, Venom is um, making fun of Flash Thompson, and uh, they're in his apartment fighting off bad guys <laughs> in a very sloppy way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's um Tom Hardy, um, Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock. Eddie Brock, yeah, and um, okay, I'm, I'm curious if you'll ever watch them because, in my own personal opinion, I would say they're not good. I would say that they're 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 films that feel that like they should have been made in the 2000s, which is a, 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 such a common thing to say at this point, but it's true. The movies aren't good. They're they're not exactly groundbreaking entertainment, and they're in a way you could say they're silly fun, mm. but. I think what works about them is primarily the chemistry between Tom Hardy and literally himself, <laughs> because he plays Venom as well, but by the voice. But but with Tom Hardy and his dynamic with Venom, and also the aesthetics, aesthetics, or aesthetic, whatever the word is, the way Venom looks, <laughs> <laughs> he's not comic book accurate because he he still has doesn't have the, the spider symbol. But the way that the fact they made him more bulky, they made him more menacing, and they they pretty much improved. The Spider-Man free incarnation of the character. Hmm. It was just, it just that's, that's a lot of positivity that oversets the the very basic stuff with the film. And they they did a similar thing with the sequel, Let There Be Carnage, where it's mostly just the same thing with a few more bits here and there added, but mostly the same movie again. Yeah, yeah. And and again, a lot of people, if I'm remembering, a lot of people mostly talk about the post credit scene because that was just, that was that was tied to Spider-Man No Way Home. And it was just, yeah, that was a highlight. But the rest of the movie, yeah, same as the first. Same as the first. And um, recently, Morbius came out, which was the the third installment in their own expanding universe film series. And I haven't seen it yet. I don't think I will. <laughs> because have you heard about it? Um, no, I've been. What I've been trying to do recently is, if I hear about a Marvel film coming out, I avoid all spoilers. And I avoid all trailers. <laughs> yes, there'll be an odd um, picture I'm going to see. It's like, no! <laughs> but then, uh, I know that film's coming out. It's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Already anticipated enough for me. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> God damn it. You've got a stronger rule than me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, um, yeah, essentially, it's basically um, if Marvel had vampires. And it's basically about a, a doctor called Michael Morbius who has a a, a, very, a grave illness, mm. that's, and he basically, through science, tries to save his life, and he ends up turning himself into a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> vampire. vampire. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking over here. <laughs> hey everybody, there's a vampire over there. Where's your friendly neighbourhood? Huh? Vampire. <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, um, he, be- <laughs> <laughs> he becomes a vampire, <laughs> and um, from what I've heard, it's just again, it's a very, very cliched plot ridden movie of um, questionable story decisions, questionable acting. I, I don't know, again, I can't say for sure about the movie because I have, I have to watch it to. To be have a final verdict on it, but from a lot of what people have said about the movie, it's a film that you'd have to see on TV. Don't waste your money on it in theaters. Is that the one with Jared Leto? That's it. That's the actor's name. Hmm. And um, yeah, the only again, the only this will be spoilers for you, I guess. But unless you're not fussed with spoilers, all means yeah, because I'm not. Because <laughs> again, I I trust the I, I don't I'm not fussed with the movie. I've, but the only a relevant thing to talk about the film was the post credit scene, mm. the same as Venom, <laughs> because um the post credit scene to Morbius is that the Vulture, Ooh. Michael Keaton's the Vulture from Homecoming, he suddenly appears in a jail cell in the Morbius world, and it's implied that well it's not implied it's shown I believe again according to what's said that the visuals showing his arrival match the the visuals from the final battle of No Way Home where the universe is breaking open. So the implication is that during that universal, you know, big thing happening, mm-hmm. um, people from the MCU got plucked out of their universe and put into other universes. And in this case, the Vulture got put into Morbius's universe. And because he's in this universe, he's, a, he's, not, he's I'm assuming he doesn't exist, or maybe he does, but he's just reasons. But they just they can't hold him in. They can't hold him in jail because they don't. He doesn't exist. 
Yeah. So they just let him go, <laughs> which it, it, it's a lot of questions. But okay, we'll go with that. Hmm, and this guy just suddenly appears in a jail. Who is he? Do we know him? Do we know him? Has anyone got a background check on him? No, uh, no, nothing on the systems. But he's got a passport. Any identification? Like no, no. Well, he's innocent. Let him out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, boss. <laughs> Are you sure? If he, he just turned up here, he, he could have just broken in. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so yeah, that's that post credit scene, and then the next post credit scene for Morbius. It follows Morbius in a undisclosed somewhere in another location, and then the, the vulture comes up to him and he says, "Oh, mate, I want you to team up with me because we've got some business with Spider Man." Uh... And, and and he's got his vulture costume. It's a bit different, but apparently he's got it, <laughs> and he and he's according to the director of the movie, apparently he cobbled it together with. His own skills, or whatever he he had, he had resources he was able to nab from this universe again, which opens so many questions. Because like, how were you able to get? Because the MCU is very more technolo- techn- technologically technologically advanced. Oh yeah, hence why his costume looked the way it did in Homecoming. But again, <laughs> you, be, you you can be the judge, I guess. For... And Homecoming is a while ago as well. Yeah, considering like the universe and everything. Mm. And it's also just questions about why is again because the spell is that how the spell works? Because the spell that Doctor Strange used to make everyone forget about Peter, it wasn't meant to have an effect on everyone else in regards to multiverse hopping. That's right. So it's you're not supposed to forget about Spider Man. You're only supposed to forget about Peter, aren't you? Yeah. So the implication is that either more even um Morbius, either um the Vulture, Adrian Toomes. Either he doesn't know who Peter is Spider-Man now, but he does remember Spider-Man because of his actions, and he wants to, he's going to go hunting for that, that version of Spider-Man in the Venomverse. Hmm. Again, that's, an, that's a great concept on paper, but the execution, it just feels like they just mucked up their story canon even more, because again, the, again, the logic of, of how he got there and, and all these other stuff. Again, people more more in more knowledgeable people have talked about this for fairer, more fairer. You can, I'm sure you can look it up. But for context, just here, I think that Morbius just was a bad film. The the story decisions didn't help it, and they there's I think that they can salvage it in a way. They just have to be very careful. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that's the, the film series for them so far. So the main point I want to talk to you about with this section, they've got a few more films coming out in the pipeline. And they, some of them they announced quite recently. So I'm curious to see if you would be interested in them. So sure. the next big film they have coming out is a little known film called Craven the Hunter. Craven the Hunter. And it's ironic that I say little known but because <laughs> this is actually his first de- debut. It's going to be his first live action interpretation on film. And he's basically a big game hunter in the comics who mm-hmm. lives his, lives his, li- his life with the goal of becoming the world's greatest hunter. Yeah. And his arch enemy is Spider Man, primarily because he is like the ultimate hunt. And they've clashed a few times. At points, they've become allies in certain events. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's a bit more of an anti hero. But yeah, he's a he's getting his own movie. <laughs> and um, I've got to say, it's um, it's interesting because, um, funnily enough, talking about Spider Man, he was originally meant to be the villain, he was toyed with being the villain for No Way Home. Back when Sony would took t- t- took the deal away from Marvel, and it was just going to be about Peter trying to clear his name. He was going to be hunted by Craven, and Tom Holland. Even, Tom Holland even confirmed in an interview that, in an interview, he confirmed that that was a Jeff, that was heavily considered for a period. But then they decided to backtrack on it and go with the story they did within the end. Hmm. And he said that, "Oh, I won't tell you about it because they might use it for another film down the line." So maybe this could be that film. We could finally see. Craven the Hunter meet a variant variant of Spider Man, whether it's Spider Man from likely from his own universe, again the Venom universe, mm-hmm. or maybe he will be completely original. Maybe it could be Venom, because again the linchpin of I'd say the Venom verse so far is of course Venom, and I mean that's one way to keep him in the public eye without you know the Venom films have him be the one that Craven is trying to hunt, and it could be their variation of the. You know the some of the great storylines where Ven- where Craven hunts down Spider Man. I think it's called Craven's Last Hunt. But yeah, um, what do you think of that potential movie story? It sounds very interesting. While you were talking, I was coming up with theories for myself as well. 
I feel like there's a huge, huge fight that they're going to come up with. I reckon. Uh, I, I've got a couple of theories here. One, Spider-Man and Venom versus Kraven. Ooh. The, the bigger the target, the better for Kraven, isn't <laughs> it? So if he takes out a Spider-Man with this symbiote suit of Venom, which technically makes Spider-Man stronger, that's just... That's basically a gold mine for him right there. But obviously, because Craven's the villain, he's gonna lose. I would say I don't think he. I think he might be an, an, the anti-hero well, because he's he's, yeah. he's gonna be the main character of this movie. So mm-hmm. I feel like they're probably. I mean, because it's Sony and because let's be honest, they haven't got the best track record for telling at least recently outside of the Spider-Man films. <laughs> I mean, again, more, Morbius is the cute, clear example right now. But um, I can't imagine them going all out. Like, because yeah. again, Morbius was a character that they could have done so much with if they if they made him an outright villain, rated R, all that other stuff, and sure that he'd have had good intentions, but to make him a full on villain, I'm again, I'm not saying he's like that in the comics because I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a big Morbius reader, but I feel like if they went a bit crazy and tried to make a movie literally about a vampire who couldn't control himself and became very notable as a villain but maybe had some good morals in other areas. I think that could have worked better than what we got in the end. Hmm. And the same thing with Craven. I think, I imagine they're probably going to scale him down. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're probably going to make him so that he's, I mean, who knows? They might not even make him a big game hunter because <laughs> Shop yeah. Horror, it's today. Yeah. That's not exactly a, a very well, well appreciated thing, but in a way I kind of hope they do. I hope they stick to his comic book roots and they make him this fierce man who's got muscle and he's like, He's he's like he loves what he does. He with a passion, and he's willing to go to great lengths to achieve his goal of becoming the world's greatest hunter. Yeah, and I think they could do a lot with that. They could make it quite, quite an entertaining ride, honestly. Yeah. But it really depends on what they do. I mean, for all we know, the film could be a very basic. He's a hunter. He's looking for this rare creature to fight, or rare, rare, rare insert rare MacGuffin. <laughs> he's looking for this rare MacGuffin, and maybe he comes up against some poachers or some hmm. some an organization of hunters themselves who are looking to gain the same thing that he wants and that can be the conflict it can be it almost can be like um indiana jones where it's just a a crazy adventure looking for this artifact or yeah an exotic creature or threat who knows it could be interesting and it, it really depends on what they their vision is for the movie at the end of the day yeah and my other other theory, what I feel they'll do with probably Craven the Hunter, because as we know, Venom's still in Tom Holland's version of uh, the universe. He's the... he's not. He uh, he um the symbiote se- 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 segment is, but yeah. Tom only got taken back to his universe. Yeah, the um the little bit of the uh, Venom. Hmm. Craven the Hunter. What do you think about like? They shouldn't be finding Craven instead of Spider Man. I think I don't think that version of it will find hunt, find Craven. But again, if um, because because Craven's universe will be part of Venom's universe, hmm. so they likely exist in the same universe, of course. So, which is why I mentioned earlier, maybe if they do end up doing the Craven's Last Hunt storyline, where he does fight Spider Man and beat him, and yeah. then he takes his black suit, which is which wasn't Venom at the time, <laughs> comics, um. Maybe they could reverse, roll, roll, roll reverse it, where he hunts Venom instead, and then he beats Tom Hardy. He doesn't. He tries to kill him, maybe, or just like discards him. But he ends up taking the suit as a trophy, and that's how he bonds with Venom. Maybe that could be the story. Uh, maybe. I mean, who knows? I, I imagine they might end up doing an origin story first hmm. to establish the character, because Kravitz Last Hunt is a famous storyline for that character. And I imagine that would that would be something they would have to reserve it for either the second film, or, or maybe even save it for Venom Three, mm. because again that's a story that I could see them doing. But I mean, you never know. Again, considering Sony's odd choice of direction with certain stories, they could end up doing that. And that honestly, I'm not gonna lie, that would be cool. I would love to see Venom go toe to toe with someone else and be beaten, and see what that person would do with the power of a symbiote. Mm. Yeah, no, that's true. Do you think Craven, if he does get absorbed by Venom or anything, if they ever think about it, do you think he'd uh, be almost invincible? 
maybe. Because yeah, Craven, at the end of the day, is just a normal man. He's yeah. just very skilled. Very, very skilled. And uh, Venom would take those skills upon himself as well. Yeah. But I, I don't feel like Craven's cooperative. Mm. He'd want to be yeah, maybe not more of a solo artist. Yeah, I imagine he would try to resist the symbiote a lot more compared to Tom, to, mm. to Eddie Brock. And... I mean, who knows? Again, depending on the storyline, Craven could even try to even kill the symbiote to try and... I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many directions you could go with that so story. So many. But my theory kind of tops off with Craven being wanting the ultimate prize. I'm thinking Craven and possibly Venom versus Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. Because <laughs> we've already seen like the encounter, obviously, with Doctor Strange and Spider-Man. What if it becomes a global uh, disaster of sorts? Oh, maybe, maybe we'll get a, we'll, we'll get um, web I don't shadows. Know. I'm, I'm, ju- I'm just trying to paint like stupid ideas in people's heads and all that. You never know, mate. Honestly, before we know, we could get web, web of shadows at mm. some point. But yeah, that's Craven's hunt. Craven the hunter. Again, it has potential. I'd say personally, but it, again, we we might end up getting another Morbius film if, yeah. they're, if, if they're not if they're not. Well, which is good. <laughs> but the next film is an interesting one because this is a bit of a departure. I say departure. It's a bit more of a... a hmm, it's a grey area kind of moving forward, it could be. Because this is and this is the movie when this was announced. There was literally... Everyone was like, huh? They're doing that? Okay. Hmm. And it was um, Madam Webb. Madam Webb. Have you ever heard of the character? No, I think this is actually a first. So in the comics, Madame Web is a mutant who's gifted with um, powers of psychionic psych- psych- sensory powers, I believe. It's um, mm. she's essentially she's got very tele- tele- telepathic powers. She's also got foresight and the ability to see the presence of psychonic powers within others. Okay, and she's always been depicted as a mentor to Spider Man. She's taken part in some of his storylines that, again, not. Not the expert here. <laughs> Comic fans can explain in more detail in the comments, but she's basically tied up with a, tied in with a lot of uh, you know other Spider Man characters, other universe variants of the character. Yeah, and yeah, essentially she's just like a good mentor to Spider Man. I mean, I I know her personally from the Spider Man animated series. Yeah, where she teamed up with Spider Man to help him stop like the, the universe, the multiverse. Essentially, essentially everything from being destroyed by another variant of Spider-Man, which is a fun watch. <laughs> and um, okay, yeah, give that a watch if you're curious. I do have one question. You said mutant. Mm-hmm. There is a house full of mutants. Yeah, and considering the potential we could be seeing with Doctor Strange too, who's to say we won't see more mutants getting more involved in the MCU? And we do know from Venom two that um. There's a character in that, I'm blanking on her bloody name, but she was like a secondary antagonist in the film. She was like classified as, classified as a mutant. So, yeah, Sony's universe could all... They've already basically set up mutants, so they could definitely delve in, a bit into that as well, establish that the mutants are, have are a presence in the MCU and the Sony universe. Potentially going to see the X-Men? I don't think so, because their, their rights are with Marvel Studios, and... They're likely saving them for a future film down the line. Yeah. I can't imagine them doing them literally in a year from in a year from now because that's because by the time this film comes out, which is alleged set to be twenty twenty three for now, that film I I don't think they're going to do anything drastically big, at least when it comes to interconnected stuff. Yeah. What I think this film has could be interesting with is the pot is the other pot- potential interconnected stuff because we know they've already cast the actress, I believe. And it's Dakota Johnston, hmm. and it's interesting because she's quite she's like in her thirties, I believe. She's she's still quite well. She, she, of course, she is young compared to the character in the comics because the comic the character of Amanda Webb she's always depicted as being a woman in her sixties or seventies, quite old. And yeah, there's a lot of leeway they could do with that because she's going to be played by a younger actress. The character will be younger, and that means that she's probably going to have a lot more hands on role with her, whatever the story ends up being. Hmm. It's going to be confusing as hell to try and figure out what they could do as being a non-comic reader of the character myself. But, again, considering the connection she has to Spider-Man with other, you know, in other interpretations, 
I'm curious to see if this movie will also have multiverse connections leading up to a possible Spider-Verse scenario. Ooh. Again, you never know. And again, considering how, um, again, Morbius, how things played out with the Vulture and how he got chucked into the universe, maybe this could further elaborate and explain how things are being handled with the multiverse and how Madam Web could be the, be the Doctor Strange of the Sony universe. Yeah, no, that's true. And how you said there's going to be multiple universes, do you think there'll be a potential of bringing back the Spider-Man villains again? Maybe, and we'll talk about that in a sec, actually, because the the, the next film... Oh my god, I still can't believe this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, this next film was announced recently, and god damn it, this... this uh, okay, so the film they announced will be coming out in 2024. It's called El Macho. For the record, I would like to apologise. I only realised after the fact that we were saying the name completely wrong. It's actually meant to be pronounced as El Moreto. And even that, I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong. So, we're sorry. <laughs> but, hey, you live and learn. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the episode. And, <laughs> literally, this character is essentially just a wrestler who inherits powers of enhanced strength from a mask he wears. Okay. And um, he's notable because he's a he's a character who only appeared in two issues of Spider-Man. Okay. And there's some level of... I, I, again, I actually remember reading this issue when it came out. I say when it came out. I remember collecting Spider-Man comics for a time when I was younger. And that was... This issue series was one of the two that, that I saw, that I read. And I remember it <laughs> being part of the Civil War storyline, I believe. But... Yeah, essentially it happens. It's basically just a very simple Sp- Spider-Man fights this luchador. <laughs> he ends up beating him, putting him in hospital. And then the luchador, something supernatural connected to the ma- power of the mask, brings a villain in and Spider-Man helps him beat the villain and that's it. <laughs> he just um, That's the storyline. So a lot of fans, no surprise, were like, ha, huh, Sony have decided <laughs> to make a movie dedicated to this character. Why? <laughs> Whereas you've got so many villains that you could pull from with this universe, especially considering it's primarily the universe that they're building up with, and yet they've done, they've decided to go with this movie. Hmm. And uh, God damn it, I don't know. I again, they've already announced the actor. I have no <laughs> idea who this is because I didn't even know he existed. <laughs> He's a rapper, I believe, or a musician. But um, I get the inkling that maybe this is this film has been made just because of the actor. Just yeah. because they want to promote an actor or something. It's like a vehicle for the actor. Who knows? Again, for all we know, this film could be good. Maybe it could be a fun departure from the traditional superhero films they've been doing so far with Venom and Morbius. Maybe it could be a fun boxing drama that just happens to be set in the world of superheroes or villains in this case. Maybe it could be a bit more of a um maybe it could be a revenge story because um like from what I'm remembering in the comic, in the two issue comic he appeared in, his father gets killed by the villain that is part of that story. So maybe it could be them tackling that storyline, but just in a more broader sense where he's fully on masking up and going out in the streets and fighting this powerful villain. Okay. Who knows? Again, there's so much you could do, but at the same time, it's like it's the most minor kind of character to pluck randomly from the world of Spider Man. Yeah. So it really just depends on what how it's going to be handled at the end of the day. Because it, it, it could be the first Sony Universe Spider-Man film they've made that could end up being a positively well-received film. Or it could just crash and burn. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you call him a wrestler, so I'm assuming he'd be a um, quite a large guy, wouldn't he? Yeah. He... So, in a sense, because... As we know, Spider Man's quite skinny. They've chosen Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. You've got uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as uh, Doctor Strange, of course. Um, who do you think would fit the role of El Macho? What actor are we uh, looking at? Because as as far as like mainstream, I say mainstream actors, like well known actors nowadays, there are a lot that we know. Like freaking, uh, we've got. Dave Bautista as um, Drax. Drax fit the bloody character well, mm-hmm. might I say. I think Drax is one of my favourite characters. Um, you've got Chris Hemsworth as Thor, or used to be, or he's still... Uh, he's still... He's still going to be Thor. We had... Um... So so you, you, you think 
do you think that they they could have chosen better with the actor then? Do you, who do we think is going to be the actor? Is they, there, they've, is... got, they've already announced him. Oh yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's, again, I don't know the guy. He's just he's a rapper called um, Bunny or something. Bunny. <laughs> Does it ring a bell? No. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that's our level of knowledge. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Essentially, um, I'm not going. I agree. Actually, I think that Dave Bautista, someone like him, would have fit this role more perfectly. Because again, I, from memory, at least from the comics, the guy's a traditional, you know, wrestler. Got that body of a wrestler, and I think that again, considering this is part of the Venom verse, which is separate to the mcu it's not our possibility for them to say oh um there's a universe where this guy this random earth thing looks like drax and that, yeah that could work i could imagine that it would, it would definitely benefit sony because again yeah. the fact that we are so com- commonly aware now of multiverses and different seeing different variations of the characters i think it would just be another way for dave batista to keep you know keep acting and getting good roles if this film is good it could be another vehicle for him especially uh, if it's because he's the main he would be the main character so it would be a good vehicle for him to jump off with after he finishes his, his time on Guardians. Mm. And for Sony, again, it would be a good received movie if it was, and it would get sequels. Again, there's a lot of things you could work with this. But the fact that they, they've decided to go with an actor, I'm sure he's an actor, why else would they cast him? But yeah. essentially a rapper. They've cast a rapper in this lead role, who, from again, from the few set photos I have seen, he's very skinny. Or at least he's very, very average. He's a very average built guy. Again, I can't say for sure. I don't know the bloody bastard. <laughs> but yeah, it's again, it's it just feels like this film right now, in the moment, feels like it's just gonna be a vehicle for an actor. Yeah. And it's not gonna be it's not gonna be good. Again, if you look at how Morbius was handled, it might not be good. It it might surprise us though. And I'll fully eat my words if it is entertaining, if it is a good film, but until then, yeah, I would, I would, I would wager no. Hmm, I do, I, I do have to say, like El Macho. When when you hear the word Macho, what do you think? Big, big Dave, Ugh, Dave, Dave Batista. Big, <laughs> Ugh, I am man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a skinny man playing El Macho. Like, if I didn't read any context or anything like that, if I went in without knowing who El Macho was, I would just think, gonna have to get someone with, who's quite stoic. Something like uh, Paul Levesque, uh, Triple H, or, uh, you know, from wrestling. Hmm. Um, someone like John Cena. Not John Cena, someone <laughs> built like John Cena. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> wrestler. But, um, because he's inherited powers from a mask or... Hmm. Something such as that, he technically doesn't need to be in a way, huge. truthfully, because if they can go down that route, yeah. The problem is, again, I feel like, again, I feel like you'd have to be authentic to the character, you'd yeah. be committed, and in that way, I mean, they can bulk him up, it's not out of the world. I mean, again, look at Chris Pratt and how he transformed from the guy in, um, what that. It's not the office, but he was in a he was in a comedy show for years. He was just this big fat funny guy, and then. Bams, here comes Starlord, and he's like, oh, he's the new sex symbol. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So it's not out of the realm for this rapper. Again, whoever the actor's name is, forgive me, Bunny. <laughs> Just have him bulk up for the, next, for the next year, and then come 2024, when he debuts as the Luchador, we could have him, we could have him be, again, be the next sex symbol. But again, it does depend on how they chose to go with the story. Because again, they could just like cop out and just say, oh, he's just, he's normal skinny guy. But when he puts on the mask, he's like as strong as the Hulk. It's like, great, but wouldn't it be a bit more visually appealing for the audience, especially considering the film is going to be marketed as a El Lucho, El, 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 El Macho. Yeah. It's in the fucking title. <laughs> so you, yeah, I think, I think they will have to definitely go be a bit committed. Be, well, they, are, they will have to be committed. They will oh, have yeah. to bulk him up. Oh yeah. Ah, but yeah, um, El Macho aside, though, we've now got one more film that's basically been all out confirmed at this point. Yeah. And no surprise here, it's Venom 3. Venom 3. So, again, there's not really a lot to talk about with this movie, other than the fact that, and also considering you haven't seen in the series, yes, you can't really pull off. I've only heard him. tidbits, so that's all I can say. Mm. Oh, might I add, there's a, uh, sorry, uh, going off a little bit of a tangent, like the second uh, Marvel film. Venom. Uh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> the second uh, Venom film. 
uh, there was a key detail they missed out on Carnage. Really? He has his signature, like, attack where he, he can change his arms into, like, axes or weapons and all that. And he slammed the hell uh, out of anything. But they didn't use that. They didn't use the, uh, like, the original character moveset, mm. which is, in a way, can be quite upsetting because hardcore Marvel fans want to see that character as they are. Yeah, they, they, they did use his, 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 his knife powers for a few things, but I think he, he's been such a very violent villain with such versatile weaponry. Yeah. Yeah, it was a shame that they didn't use that a bit more, especially considering in the actual finished film, he ends up dying. He ends up getting beaten and gear killed in the first in the one movie he's appears in. So yeah, good job on them, Marvel. You're really selling recurring villains. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sony, I'm being honest. <laughs> so um, yeah, for, regarding to regarding Venom three, there's there's still not a lot to go on, and. There's only a few bits here and there, and that's just from the actor, because the actor himself said that he would love to see the symbiote dragon Grendel appear. And I only know a bit about this, but for context, just assume that um, there's a Venom's home planet has very a variation of other creatures that are bonded to symbiotes. So basically, that's that. It's a, a symbiote dragon, essentially. A symbiote dragon. Yeah, so <laughs> that leaves um, some interesting concepts for what they could do with the Venom film. If they go that route, they could end up having Re- Venom's race come to Earth in an invasion, and they Ooh. bring with them the forces of you know dragons as well. And we could have Venom best trying to team up with some other allies, maybe other villains. Wink, wink. <laughs> wink, wink <laughs> nudge, nudge, nudge. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> Hint. Hint. <laughs> yeah. we, could, we, could, we could have them all team up to deflect this invasion from attacking. Yeah, yeah. But I think also they, they won't do that. I think the more likely path they'll do is that they'll have him team up with Toxin, who was teased in Venom 2, but who's basically an ally, another symbiote who works as yeah. an ally to Spider-Man occasionally. He's but he because he bonds with a police officer and yeah, you know, they become an anti hero. And um, I can see them doing that, but at the same time, I kind of I would kind of want them to go away from that because the, the again, the last two Venom films, it's been him versing another another symbiote, yeah. And I feel like three times in a row, you can you can only get so far with that. Again, the storyline that we literally just described, they could do that <laughs> just have it the symbiote trilogy or something, which could work, honestly. But at the same time, I kind of feel like they probably should try something a bit different. Yeah. So maybe have them go up against a comic book villain that's a bit that's not connected to a symbiote. Just have it. Maybe have it be an alien. Just have it be a different alien compared to the symbiotes, and have it be Venom. I'd like to think it would have more connections to the grand multiverse because mm. we know from the post credit scene Venom two when he's talking with Eddie and he says, "Oh, um." You know, we know there were multi, there were multiple universes out there because but he says something along, along the lines of um, there are eight billion light years of hive knowledge across the universe because of you know the symbiotes have a hive connected mind. So basically, Venom knows and is aware of Venom from the Tobey Maguire universe. Yeah. So he knows about Spider Man through that, which is why in the post credit scene when he sees Tom Holland, he goes that guy. Because he knows from his shared hive mind that he's in his his other variants have count, encountered Spider Man before, mm. and yeah, I'd like to think they would acknowledge that they would in going into this next film they will acknowledge that. But yeah, we went to another bloody universe, mate. Should we still try and find Spider Man? <laughs> and um, who knows? From um, this is the last thing I want to end this on with you. Yeah, but again, okay, we'll hold off that for a bit. But yeah, Venom Three. Venom Three. Th- there's a lot that they could do. There is. But I just hope that what they end up doing, I just hope that it's better than the last two because I can't say they're bad, bad films. They weren't a waste of time in, in regards to like Morbius. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would say that I would like them to try something different and make it a bit more than what they've been so far, the films. But yeah, that we'll have to see with that one because that's, that's literally just got announced recently. So we still have no idea what they could do. Yeah, no, that is true. That- but but Venom three, like you're right, they have so many things that they could do. Uh, I kind of want to bring up a, like small topic of symbiotes. Like, what are the known symbiotes? Because we have Carnage, Venom, Toxin, mm. and I remember seeing 
like another few others like anti there's, yeah there's um there's um anti venom there's anti-venom. um there's screech or scream and there's um there's like three others i believe that are offshoots of venom or or children of venom yeah i'm sure i'm sure i don't know i'm sure we'll <laughs> we'll pick them out in at some point but um yeah they um there's other variants they can bring in versions they can bring in that can make that can enrich the story but like that they kind of falls into the same category of it's another symbiote so again, depending on the narrative they end up going with, uh, it's either going to be the same thing, but if they, if they execute it well, it could be good. If not, oh great, more of the same. Yeah. <laughs> Yippee. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about the crowd. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> ah, I can feel the bloody excitement to that, guys. Let's go! <laughs> and everyone in the quiet. <laughs> All right. Try not to hide too much excitement. <laughs> kind of killing my vibe, guys. <laughs> oh. So with this film, this is something that we know is going to have going to come at some point. Yes, it's because it's been teased in Morbius. It's been talked about by Sony since the Amazing Spider-Man Two. But we're we're going at some we're going, at some point we are going to get the Sinister Six film. And are you aware of the Sinister Six? The Sinister Six. Uh, essentially, isn't that... Uh, I could be wrong. Don't gun me down, anyone, please. I'm sorry if I get this wrong. But the Sinister Six, that's the, all the original uh, villains, isn't it? Roughly. It's essentially um, all five, six core Spider-Man villains, iconic ones, yeah. teaming up to fight Spider-Man. So we're talking Green Goblin, Sandman, Dr. Connor. We've also got Venom, essentially. Uh can't uh, forget him. He's been the main talk of this podcast. <laughs> uh, drawing a blank. Um, El- electric what? guy. <laughs> Electro. <laughs> Electro. I don't know why I keep forgetting his name. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> uh, and uh, Dr. Octavius. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so there's um, the, among the many that have, um, except with it, I think, yeah, they're most of those that have featured in the roster before in the comics. And um, they actually were technically in Spider-Man No Way Home <laughs> because um, they were the villains that all teamed up together to fight Spider-Man. Yes. They, just, they just lacked a sixth member. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, um, essentially that that film teased the potential of a, a team of villains teaming up with Spider-Man. And the fact that Morbius' post credit scene ends with <clears throat> the Vulture teaming up and suggesting an alliance between him and Morbius... That pretty much implies, strongly implies that the Sinister Six are forming in the Venom universe, and they're going to be going after Spider-Man. But we now know, thanks to No Way Home, that everyone forgot about Peter. So likely, the likelihood is that Tombs also forgot about Peter. He just remembers that Spider-Man stopped him. So he's he's going to go after Spider-Man. So are you St- implying there's going to be a new Sinister Six? Or- I, I imply that there's going to be the Sinister Six are going to form in Spider in the the Venom universe. Yeah. So so far we've got Morbius, we've got Venom, we've got Tombs. We're going to be getting Craven uh, the Hunter. We might get some other ones. They might introduce variants of Doctor Octopus and the Lizard, maybe, or they might just make some original ones, or they just pluck more famous characters from. Well, I say famous, more famous other comic book characters. Yeah. From the Foster into the list going forward. Then <laughs> I tell they they'd bring an El Macho, <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah uh, maybe he'll be the mascot. Like go get him, guys. <laughs> okay, can I just ask uh, the rhino? Oh yeah, the rhino. Yeah, he, yeah. he could. Um, but yeah, um, I feel that like what they're gonna they're gonna form. They're definitely gonna team up to fight Spider Man. Hmm. And here's the interesting thing I want to bring up. It's been heavily implied through talks around the fandom, around the studio maybe, that um, they might want to retcon the, the Venomverse to be part of the Amazing Spider-Man series. So, in the end, we could have the Sinister Six team up with Venom to fight Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, who himself in his own return movie said, God, I'd love to fight an alien. I'd, all I thought was a rhinoceros in a, in a, in a rattle metal, metal, metal suit. <laughs> So he could fight that alien eventually. Yeah, he could fight that alien eventually. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think of that? Do you th- what do you think of Andrew Garfield coming back as like the core Spider-Man of the of the Sony universe? I feel like he could do some like what's the word? 
I'm not, I'm not going to say redeem or redemption. Yeah, cause because he, he's never done anything wrong. Yeah, if he was just shut on quite a lot. Yeah, he, his films just weren't, weren't the best. They were just made by committee. I just he needs an iconic talking point. But like, yeah, No Way Home was uh, a pretty good thing for him. But let, let's be real, that was Tom Holland's iconic moment because mm. that's his universe of Spider Man. And uh, if Andrew Garfield gets his own spotlight. I think I'd really appreciate that. Yeah. Because he himself didn't do a bad job. He actually did pretty. He did a pretty good job. It's just the films he was in... I'm sorry, they weren't that interesting. No. <laughs> Compared to uh, Tommy Maguire's and uh, Tom Holland's. But, yeah. It, regardless, if they bring out another film uh, of his, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, I mean, I would love for them to announce The Amazing Spider-Man 3 and yeah. give, him an, give him the limelight again. I'm sh- Allow people to see that he can be great in a film that is great. Well, and he can be greater in a film that is better. <laughs> Give him his trilogy. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the the potential from what this story concept could imply that, oh, he's going to re- he's going to be established as like the Spider-Man of this universe. I think that'd be great. Because if anything, you build up the villains, then you do Spider-Man, the Sinister Six versus the Sinister Six. And then you do the Amazing Spider-Man 3. Hmm. It's. I mean, there's no better way you could have it all come together and satisfy the fans, satisfy the investors that with more money. Because again, who didn't, who wouldn't want to see Andrew Garfield again after the the big response fans gave him in No Way Home? Yeah. And there's just, there's just there's just more you could go with that. You could go from there and make more Spider-Man films with him. And we know that they're not opposed to doing that because we've got the animated Spider-Man films. And there's talks that they might bring back Tobey Maguire for Spider-Man 4 in the Sam Raimi universe. So it's not like they need to say, oh, we can't do this because it would confuse the audience. Mother- motherfucker, you've introduced multiverse at this point. <laughs> What's stopping you from doing this? Yeah, no, that's true, that's true, that's true. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, God damn it, it would be so perfect if they, do, if they do that. The only counter to that is that, unfortunately, reports, again, you can find better people to go into detail about it, but reports came out recently that Sony did try to talk to Andrew Garfield about praising the role, and he turned them down. And we don't know the full context, but again, considering the response that Morbius got, it's possible that that might have had an effect on it. That yeah. he he's he saw how because again he was working with the Marvel Studios when they made No Way Home. Sony are completely different, so for all we know, he might have saw what they were doing, what their plan was. He might have liked it, but then he saw that oh. You, if you're the same people who screwed me over two for like five years ago with the Amazing Spider-Man, I don't want that. Yeah. So it's possible that that might have been a factor. Maybe it's a completely different factor that we have yet to find out, and we probably never will find out about. But if that is true, if that did happen, and we are not going to see Andrew Garfield again, that is very unfortunate, and it likely ends up meaning that whatever they end up doing with the Spider-Man character in the Venomverse, they might end up just like bringing in a different actor. Which, again, it could be different, it could be interesting, but at the same time, it's like, you've got so much you could do with Andrew Garfield. Why? Why? Why not? But again, we don't know for sure what could happen going forward with any of these movies. So I guess, in official final close-off, <laughs> what do you think about all of this? All of this. It's definitely been a, a lot to take in and a lot to think about. Uh, Madam Webb, up until now, this was first time I've heard of it, even El Macho. Like, um, it'd be interesting to see Madam Web interacting with Spider-Man and possibly even interacting with Doctor Strange because by the sounds of it, they, her and Doctor Strange are sort of alike in a way. They're both... I wouldn't say they're alike, in, at least in power set, but in terms of mentors and the fact that they can definitely gather... I mean, I guess you're right in the way. They, they can definitely have... They have that aura about them. Yes. Yeah, that they know a lot more than they're letting on, and they have a lot of wisdom and a lot of guidance. And their powers, even though they're different, they do share certain attributes when it comes to the, you know, the fact that they they protect the wider the wider world from threats that could affect everything. Hmm. Uh, other thoughts: Craven, Craven the Hunter. Uh, again, didn't hear of him up until now, but. Sounds potentially he sounds like a very cool uh, character. Mm. Like, uh, it'd 
kind of sounds like a bounty hunter in a way. Like it, his bounty is the title. Um, and sort of makes me think if he's going to be a hunter and a lot like that, he sounds like a similar character already. Maybe, well, maybe not in the uh, same Marvel universe, but the X Men universe. Deadpool. Hmm. Um, I can't imagine him doing quips and and um, and um, and funny jokes, but yeah, I can but... I can imagine he's the kind of guy that would be okay with like going far if if the if the situation required it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as far as the Sinister Six goes, um. Let, let, let's face it. You're not gonna re, you're not gonna be able to replace the old Sinister Six. They're they're awesome. They're great. But then you're not gonna be able to get better. Is what I mean. Maybe not so because um, again they did they struck lightning in the bottle with the No Way Home with that roster and they worked so well. Even though it wasn't official officially Sinister Six, it was basically that they were the Sinister Six. Yeah, they exactly. Call them the Sinister Five or whatever, but they 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 they, they played their role in impacting Peter's life. And it's going to be difficult for them to do that again in a solo movie, especially with how they've, the track record they've got so far. But they could do it. Yeah. As the saying goes, it just takes effort and, and a lot of passion in the project and a lot of enthusiasm for it. Yeah. Uh, my opinion as well on this Sinister Six. Uh, you're probably going to be able to do better than Sandman and Electro. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong; they they filled their roles perfectly in uh, No Way Home, but I, I generally don't think you're going to get better than Doctor Connors. I, I I say that ish because he had a uh, quite a good relationship with Spider Man before he turned into a lizard, mm. and in No Way Home they found out they sorted his problem out, and yeah, he's recovered. But you definitely, I don't think you're definitely going to get uh, better than Dr. Octavius or um, Green Goblin because Dr. Octavius was a big problem himself mm. with the arms and everything. Like, Spider-Man 2 was brilliant. I quite enjoyed that. Uh, and the Green Goblin, like, if you think of number one Spider-Man villain problem just because, you know, you might think he's a dick. <laughs> Green Goblin. <laughs> uh, he's he's the OG. He's the original. Hmm. Uh, and with uh, the possibility of there being a new Sinister Six, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm definitely intrigued. I'm definitely intrigued and interested. I, I want to see. Uh, I do want to see how it turns out. But I don't think they're going to do better. No. I mean, again, they could blow us out of the water with this roster if this is the Avengers level kind of movie that they're leading up to. And again, it really just depends on what they set up with mm. the with the leading up movies, what they want to do with that vision, and what they want to do going forward. Maybe. Yeah. For me, I guess as a whole, with the Venom verse and all that talk, I think that it still has potential, despite a lot of the films so far being meh to. Downward shit. <laughs> <laughs> from what again? From what I've heard from Morbius, at least. But again, I'm not going to waste my money on that film. Yeah. But yeah, they they still they have again. There's there's concepts and ideas that they can work with and build with. And I, I think the primary one is primary Venom when it comes to Spider Man. I want to see Venom. This version of Venom fight Spider Man. I would prefer it to be Tom. Um, Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Yeah. Because they've again from what they set up in post credit scene with No Way Home, Tom Holland's going to have his own symbiote situation to deal with. Yes, <laughs> so yes I exactly. So I can't imagine them tying into that and making things confusing as hell. But if they do, if they end up going the path of Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, that makes so much more sense. It builds on a universe they've already got built up in a way with the amazing, <laughs> the amazing films. And primarily, it would just be all around good for the fandom and for the fans and the, the, the studio execs and it would make the universe a bit more solid. Yeah. And yeah, I just think that who wouldn't want to see Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man going up against Venom? Just it's Spider-Man versus Venom. The title says it all. And I think it'd be great. I think yeah. it all could be great. Until then, yeah, we'll have well, to wait and see, I guess. Yeah, exactly. But I don't generally have any more opinions on that either, but Kind of just said it right there and then. We'll have to wait. Yeah. We will see. 